Welcome to this memorial service. We are here to remember the people of Beds who were homeless and died in the past year, to give thanks to God for their lives, and remember the hope we all have of an eternal home with God because of God's mercy, forgiveness, and love. Let us pray. Oh God, we remember so many things today. Times of joy we shared with those who have died, and the times of despair they sometimes caused us. We remember that they were your children, just as we are, that you love them just as you love us, and that none of us can do anything to make you stop loving us. Be with us in this hour as we both give thanks and grieve. Amen. A reading from Isaiah 58, Untying the Thongs of the Yoke, Setting Free the Oppressed, Breaking Off Every Yoke. It is not sharing your bread with the hungry, bringing the affliction and the homeless into your house, clothing the naked when you see them, and not turning your back on your own flesh. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your wound shall quickly be healed. Your vindication shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Matthew 26, 34 through 40. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me ill and you cared for me in prison and you visited me then the righteous will answer him and say lord when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you when did we see you ill or in prison and visit you and the king will say to them in reply amen I say to you, whatever you did for one of these least brothers of mine, you did for me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want to read a passage. I want to read a passage from the Gospel of Luke about a poor, homeless, hungry man named Lazarus who lay outside the closed gate of an unnamed rich man every day and about how differently things turned out for them at the end. The parable begins with, There was once a rich man, expensively dressed in purple robes, eating feasts every day. And a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, was brought and dumped just outside the rich man's gate every day. All he longed for was to eat the scraps that fell, fell off the rich man's table. His best friends were the dogs who came and licked his sores. Lazarus died and was taken up by the angels into the lap of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. And in, in Hades, the place of the dead and in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham in the distance and Lazarus in his lap. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy, send Lazarus to dip his finger in water to cool my tongue. I'm in agony in this fire. But Abraham said, Child, remember that in your lifetime you got the good things and Lazarus the bad things. It's not like that now. Now he's comforted and you're tormented. And besides that, there's a huge chasm set between us so that no one can go from us to you even if he wanted to, nor can anyone cross over from you to us. And the rich man said, well then, let me ask you, Father Abraham, send him to the house of my father where I have five brothers so that he can tell them the score and warn them so that they won't end up here in this place of torment. And Abraham answered, they have Moses and the prophets to tell them the score. Let them listen to them. I know, Father Abraham, he said, but they're not listening. If someone came back to them from the dead, 
they would change their ways. And Abraham replied, if they won't listen to Moses and the prophets, they're not going to be convinced by someone who rises from the dead. In all of Jesus' parables, Lazarus is the only person given a name. His name is a Hebrew word that means the one whom God helps. Every day Lazarus was carried from wherever he had spent the night, maybe under a tree, maybe under a tent, and he was laid in front of the rich man's gate, so he was probably partially paralyzed. He was hoping to be fed with crumbs that dropped from the rich man's table. When Lazarus died, he was carried to heaven by the angels to Abraham's lap. One of the things about this parable I love the most is that Lazarus ends up in heaven, in the lap of Abraham, even though there's no evidence that he believed the right things about God, that he went to church or read his Bible or tried to get off drugs and alcohol. He was there because of the love of God for people like Lazarus. The rich man died and was buried, and in Hades, the place of the dead, he looked up and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus right there with him. He not only sees Lazarus, but he knows his name, which meant that he knew Lazarus was lying just outside his closed gate every day and knew his terrible condition. You would think the first thing he would say would be to apologize to Lazarus and to ask his forgiveness. But no, he calls out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue. The fire here is so painful. He had shown no mercy to Lazarus outside his gate, and now he wants mercy from him. I think the people listening to Jesus tell this parable would have expected Lazarus to explode in rage and something like, you dog. You saw me outside your gate, but you did nothing about my hunger or the pain of my sores. The dogs were kind to me, but you, where were you when I needed help? Now you want me to serve you? Abraham, tell this egomaniac to fry in hell. What he's serving, suffering now is only half of what he deserves. But at Lazarus doesn't. He is silent. Just as he was silent outside the rich man's gate, hoping and maybe praying for kindness. Homeless people don't have a voice, do they? And Abraham said that the rich man child Remember that you received good things in your lifetime and Lazarus received bad things. Good things and bad things. Recall Jesus saying, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. And then Abraham said to the rich man, Sorry, there's no way to help you. No way to get from here to you or from you to here. A couple of years ago at the Vatican in Rome, there was a memorial service for a homeless man they had all known. The priest at that service said that the rich man in this parable represented the rich people in that time who were focused on their own wealth and Lazarus represented the silent cries of the poor. The rich man knew Lazarus was there, but kept his gate closed to him, and the same thing happens today. The priest said that when Lazarus died, the rich man's opportunity for goodness died with him. The rich man knew the Bible by heart, but he never thought the Bible had anything to do with the poor, the homeless, the priest said that the risen Jesus comes in the person of the poor, in the person of those who have no rights, no land, no food, no home. Martin Luther once said, if you want to see God, don't look to the heavens, look to the alleys. 
We know nothing about the homes those we remember today grew up in. Some were probably filled with kindness and some were probably filled with anger. But we know the home that they and all of us long for at the end. A home where we are loved deeply and unconditionally. And when these eight human beings we remember today were with us, they had no house, no home. But they and we were not created to live with no place to lay our head. We were created to live at home with God. And because God is love, God will be the home they never had, the love they never had, the peace they never had. We, live the, we, live, we leave them like Lazarus in the arms of God who loved them while they were here with us, the God who had a place prepared for them when they left us, and the God who tells them who they were, who they are now, and who they always will be, beloved children of God, at home at last. It is not the will of God that anyone be homeless. Amen. William Belts Emil Harmon Trudine Harvey Barry Houlihan. Emily Montanaro. Richard Newman. Daniel O'Connor. Severin Paul Roth. Many years ago, I used to live in the city where the homeless problem uh, or the homeless issue was a much larger situation than it is in here in LaGrange. And the homeless people at that time in my life, I was afraid of. Um, they were very intimidating to me. I didn't understand the homeless issue. And I wanted to change that about myself. I wanted to get to know someone who was having a difficult time and found themselves in that situation, but I wanted to see them as a person, not as a homeless person. When I came to LaGrange, I had the opportunity to meet Paul and um, we spent time together. I went out to dinner with him. Um, I saw him on a regular basis. He was a well-known face in LaGrange. Um, I got to know him as a person. We met in the library, and he told me about his situation. And it was very, it was very much a learning experience for me, and it enlightened me into the situation of understanding Paul's situation. He grew up in LaGrange. He had a family here. He suffered from some mental health issues. Um, he had jobs. He drove a bus. Uh, he was funny. He was sarcastic. Um, and sometimes he was difficult to talk with, and sometimes he was difficult to be with. But I learned to overlook that and to wait for a time when we would be able to converse a little bit easier. Um, and I have to say, Paul changed my whole perception on on homelessness in the United States and throughout the world. And um, I would call Paul my friend. And Paul passed away recently, and I was really sad to hear that. Um, but that also made me happy because I knew that Paul had suffered a lot in his life here, and now he was not suffering anymore. And that gives me um, cause for happiness and optimism. But I, I have to say, Paul lived in the woods. 
and I drive by the woods by my home um, all the time. It's cold, it's dark, it's snowy, it's rainy, and I think of Paul, and I think of the suffering that he had here on earth, and it taught me that I need to help change that, even if it's just a little bit at a time with one person at a time, um, and so that's what I am committed to do. Don't weep at my grave, for I am not there. I have a date with a butterfly to dance in the air. I'll be singing in the sunshine, wild and free, playing tag with the wind while waiting for thee. The comfort and sweetness of peace after the clouds, the sunshine, after the winter, the spring, after the shower, the rainbow, for life is a changeable thing. After the night, the morning, bidding all darkness cease. After life's care and sorrows, the comfort and sweetness of peace. And now receive the benediction O oh God, support us all the day long of this troubled life until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. And then of thy mercy, grant us a safe home and a holy rest and a peace with you at last. Amen.